All right, welcome back everyone. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto, bringing you guys another video here today. We're gonna to be looking at Cardano. So now, recently Cardano has updated the Daedalus wallet. It is available for download on the testnet. Here in this video today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the process of installing the wallet. And I'm gonna be giving you my thoughts on some of the updated features. I know they have done some really cool things with the graphics and the updated UI. So I'm gonna be giving you my thoughts and opinions on that. We're also gonna be taking a look at where we are currently with the Cardano roadmap. So right now we're in the process of transitioning into the Shelly era. So what does that mean for Cardano as a ecosystem and as a project, as well as what we can expect going forward after Shelly has been released. And then lastly, I've also got this pulled up here. This is Crypto Supreme, the official merch store of Cardano merchandise. And they have just recently added some really cool merchandise to their store. So we're gonna be talking a little bit about that. Um, if you guys are interested in picking up some of this cool merch or if you are looking to get more information about Cardano, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We talk about Cardano and other awesome cryptocurrency projects here on this channel, as well as um, you know talking about investing and strategy. So if you're interested in that type of content, be sure to smash the like and let's get into it. So you guys, here in this video, we're gonna be talking about Cardano, where we're at right now with the process of transitioning into Shelly. So right now, the uh, I guess you could say the entire structure of Cardano is held by these federated nodes that are held by IOHK, Cardano Foundation, Emergo. Now with Shelly, what they're doing is they're essentially handing over the blockchain to the community. So their their goal with this is to make it decentralized to the point that you know the decentralization aspect is even more advanced and broad than something like bitcoin or ethereum and being that it is a proof of stake blockchain you know from the ground up it's been built as a proof of stake blockchain the the implications for it are huge because it's going to have things such as scaling, such as smart contracts and dApps. So Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin first generation blockchain, it, it's it got the front runner advantage. It definitely does have, you know, that going for it. However, it is very slow. It's very dumb in the sense that it's not programmable to the point where you can actually build a dApp or something like that. Um, you know, Bitcoin is first generation blockchain. It's meant to be a store of value at this point in time. But I think that as far as a currency goes, like a true cryptocurrency, Cardano is really aiming to be just that because not only will it have the ability for smart contracts and dApps, but there are also going to be things with, you know, the programming languages that are able to be built on it, like Plutus and Marlowe. You know, you can create a whole bunch of different uh, types of I guess you could say smart contracts and, and different, you know, different types of use cases for this types of, of technology. So the the tech is definitely much much more advanced than Bitcoin is. Now, this project has been around for almost two years, where Cardano has actually been a a real token on the Cardano blockchain. And at this point in time, we're very much looking forward to Shelly so that we can earn passive rewards by staking. And essentially the way staking is going to work is your, your one Cardano is going to be almost something like a lottery ticket. And for every one of these lottery tickets, the more chances you have of winning the lottery. So the more stake that you have in the network, the more chances of you winning uh, the, the reward for mining a block. Now, now essentially with holding these, these tokens, uh, you would have to have a, a node running on the network. You would have to have a stake pool. Now, if you are not able to keep your stake pool up 24/7, uh, if your if your uptime is you know not very good, if you would not have the ability to run a stake pool, you do have the option to delegate your stake. So, if you're in a position like myself, you know I'm not a very technical person. 
Um, I'm always willing to learn, but I just don't have the technical background that some of these other computer programmers and software engineers might have. So for me, in my instance, I would be interested in learning how to delegate my stake so that I can still receive rewards for participating in the network, but not necessarily have to deal with running a node or running a stake pool. And of course, there are going to be incentives for the people who do decide to do that. But for people like myself, you know, being able to still participate in the network and get rewarded, that's a huge, huge bonus. So that's just a little bit about what we're what we're looking forward to here with the Shelley era. Now, once Gogan goes live, I, I believe that Charles said that Shelley and Gogan are going to happen pretty, uh, you know, as far as the, the time between the two, they, they should happen pretty quickly. Um, now, whether Gogan does come out this year, next year is anyone's guess, but essentially Gogan relates to smart contracts. So after the network has become decentralized with Shelly, the network is going to be able to facilitate smart contracts with Gogan. And you know, after Gogan, you know, we have Basho, we've got Voltaire. So there is quite a ways to go with the roadmap for Cardano. Here we're looking at 2020 is the estimated completion time. And I think where we are currently right now, we're at 2019, almost at the end of 2019. So it's very safe to say that this investment is still going to be a year or two away from reaching its full potential. But I think that now it's a it's a unique opportunity in time to be able to acquire these tokens at a relatively cheap price. So moving on here, we're going to be taking a look at the price chart. And I'm just going to be giving you my thoughts and opinions on where we're at currently. So as you guys can see, <clears throat> at the beginning of this year, uh, or end of last year, rather, we began making higher lows. So higher lows was the most significant thing at the beginning of this year with Cardano. Now what we can see here is that we were not able to break past 10 cents. So we were not able to make higher highs. So the uptrend has not technically been confirmed yet. Now what this means is that we are still in the accumulation phase. Where we're at currently, the price is, is using 6 cents as a form of resistance right now. You can see that this has had some area of confluence here in the past. Um, now the price is, let's see here, because the MACD has had a cross up into the positive territory and the RSI has come up from being oversold. Here we're almost in the neutral territory looking to make our way back upwards again. So the price right now is just sideways consolidation. Whether or not we make a break for the upside or the downside is anyone's guess. But for me, in my personal opinion, guys, this is not financial advice, by the way. Please do your own research. I'm using this as an opportunity to average in. Now, you know, the price right now, about what, like six cents and from its all time high, still Cardano, I think it reached its all time high with maybe like a dollar and 20 cents. So if you compare a dollar and 20 cents to six cents, you know, you're, you're getting this asset at almost 90% plus discount. So realistically, I'm looking at this as an opportunity. If you, if you enjoy this type of crypto community and this cryptocurrency and what it's doing, then I think that you would also find that this is a great time to just start packing your bags. And I've also got this right here. This is Crypto Supreme's website. They've got some pretty cool merchandise that they've just released onto their website. This right here is just a pretty cool metal wallet. They've also got a nice little paper wallet. Uh, this Tangem card, I just wanted to announce here again on the channel that I am going to be doing a giveaway for one of these Tangem cards. Really, really cool piece of hardware. Um, just a really nice thing to have, especially for those who are passionate about Cardano like myself, and I know a lot of you. So to be entered to win a free Tangem card, all you have to do is be a subscriber to the channel and just drop a like and leave a comment. Um, just say that you'd like to win the Tangem card or, or let me know your thoughts on Cardano. Any comment really is going to be acceptable so that you can enter to win. And I'm probably going to be announcing the winner here in the next couple weeks, uh, maybe in the middle of August. So stay tuned for that as well. Now to get into the meat and potatoes of this video guys, we're going to be taking a look at the Daedalus wallet for Cardano. So now this new version has been released on the testnet. 
Um, so it is available for you to download. I will leave a link down in the description below. So if you're interested in downloading it, be sure to check it out. Uh, if you are able to download it, I would love to know your thoughts. Leave a comment down in the comment section below. Um, as far as my opinions, I went ahead and downloaded it. Now when you download it, this is what it's going to look like right here. So now I've went ahead and spared you guys the process of running down your spending password and your recovery phrase. After you download this application, you will have to go through that process. Um, just like with creating any other new cryptocurrency wallet, you do have to have your spending passcode and you've got to have your recovery phrase written down. Now what we're looking at here, this is going to be the main screen for the testnet. Uh, one thing that I found interesting is that if we go here to more, we can see the wallet UTXO distribution. So I think that's pretty cool and, and we should be able to see more uses from that type of information, I think, once Shelly is released. But that's just one of the quick things I noticed here. Um, a lot of the other features and buttons are pretty much in the exact same spot. It looks very, very similar to what we were looking at before. Um, let's take a look here. On the website, there actually was a way for you to be able to transfer uh, some type of funds. So let's take a look and see here. I'm just going to find that information, see if I can give that to you guys. Here it just gives you the um, steps to be able to write down your recovery phrase and telling you about that. So now here is the interesting part. So what we need to do is get funds from the faucet because I want to be able to play around with some of these different features. So what we can do is we can go to the receive tab, type in your password, click on generate new address, the new address will be displayed in the list of generated addresses below. And then from the list, choose your new address and then click in copy address. Okay, so then open your browser and go to the faucet address. So the faucet address can actually be found on this website. So you guys will need this in order to download uh, funds. Now this is only on the testnet, so these are not live funds. This is not real money. This is just to, to use with the testnet version. So you can click on this link here. You can paste your address in the corresponding space. Complete the CAPTCHA, re, uh, click on request, and then wait a few minutes for the tokens to be sent to your wallet. So if you do that, you will be able to receive tokens in your wallet. Um, and as far as sending and receiving, the process is very similar to how it was on the mainnet. Um, let's see, not much has changed there. So this is just giving some information about how we can receive those test funds. So let's see here. So the faucet is a component that provides free tokens for testing purposes to developers. Do, 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 do. Okay, so it's saying the faucet is accessed using a form shown below where you need to enter an address to receive the funds. So enter the address you want to uh, top up in the form field, click on the request button. The tokens will be accessible in five to 10 minutes. So this is what you would need to use if you were to request funds onto the testnet version of Daedalus. I'm not gonna go through the process here right now. Just wanted to show you guys how to go about that. But as far as what we're looking at here with the testnet version, uh, you know, it's uh, it's pretty cool. I gotta say, it's, um, it's nice to be able to see this right here. You've got Daedalus Diagnostics. This is actually giving us some information about what we're looking at here with my particular node. You can see all these different things here. Check out. Um, also, when you open up the Daedalus wallet, let me just see if I can show you guys here. If I click it to open it, there's actually some pretty cool graphics going on here. So this right here is showing the status of the node. This right here is a, it's like a more interactive graphic for the loading process. So that's really cool to see. Uh, so, you know, just a few small things. I think that they've done a great job with the user interface from the get go. So this is just improving on the already just really intuitive and really thought out design for Daedalus. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on the testnet version of the wallet. Now, I'm very much looking forward to when Shelly comes out. You know, we're going to be able to delegate our stakes. We're going to be able to find stake pools. And I was doing a bit of research as well and from listening to one of the Cardano Effect podcasts. So it's going to be interesting because when you go to select one of the stake pools to delegate to, 
you can actually see the different statistics as far as the uptime, um, you know, the reliability of the pool. You're going to be able to see what type of rewards you can expect, um, whether those are estimates or how accurate they are, anyone's guess at this point. But I'm thinking that there is going to be a metric to be able to gauge that. So very interesting to see that. Um, also, while we're talking about Cardano, one thing that I found very interesting, there is a website called Aid Attainment. Aid Attainment is a very valuable member in the Cardano community. Just want to give him a huge shout out for coming up with this right here. This is the Ada staking calculator. So I've been able to use this as a tool to help me gauge my expected returns after staking is live on the mainnet. So in my case, you know, I'm trying to formulate a goal of what I think would be an appropriate number of Cardano to stack before this coming bull run, before staking goes live or Gogan or any of that. So let's just say hypothetically, you know, in my case, if I was going to be looking at really just becoming a crypto whale, I mean, at this point, guys, they're giving Cardano away at five, six cents. I mean, it's it's on sale. So you know, let's say if you're able to make a $10,000 investment in Cardano, let's take a look and see what that would look like for you. So let's just do this really quick. This is just for entertainment purposes, guys. But let's say a $10,000 investment, and you put that into Cardano at these prices here today, let's round up to six cents. You would have, let's see, 166,666 Cardano. So let's go ahead and round that. So we're looking at 16, or sorry, 167,000 Cardano. All right, so we're gonna keep the numbers, numbers simple. So 167,080 for $10,000. So your $10,000 investment would bring you, on a daily basis in the best case scenario, approximately 16 ADA. On a monthly basis, about 500 ADA, and on a yearly basis, about 6,000 ADA. So I think by looking at it from a longer term time perspective, if you are gonna be keeping your coins staked uh, so that you are able to receive a passive reward, looking at it from a yearly or even a monthly time perspective is probably gonna be the best perspective. Now, if you were to take a look at it, that $10,000 investment, of course, over time, we're gonna expect the price to appreciate. Uh, anything's possible though, like who knows the future. But what we're looking at here is so the best case scenario would be approximately 500 Cardano per month. Now, let's just say conservatively, if the price were to get even to a dollar, you're gonna be looking at a $500 monthly return on $10,000, which is very good. I mean, the price does have to appreciate to that point, but I think that that's reasonable to expect. Now, let's say if you were really, like this is just for, for fun, guys. I'm, I'm just having fun with you guys here. Um, so this is half a million Cardano, okay? Let's say if you're a whale, let's say if you have half a million Cardano, the best case scenario on a daily basis, you can expect around 50 Cardano per day. On a monthly basis, you'd be looking at about 1,500, and on a yearly basis, you'd be looking at about 18,000, best case scenario. So, is this the time to become a cryptocurrency whale? Who knows? I think that you know, this is a great opportunity to get in on some really, really cheap coins that can produce a really, really strong return in the future. Let me know what you guys think. What is your target for Cardano? What is the number that you guys are trying to reach? All right, you guys. Well, that is it for this video. I hope you guys found some value. Hope you guys found some entertainment from this video. Uh, be sure to drop a like. Let me know your thoughts. And I will see you guys in the next one. Till next time. Cheers.